Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. It is Sunday. I hope you're having a good weekend. I hope you're enjoying the sunshine if you're over here in the UK because it is baking hot out there. Um, not going to be too long a video today. I've got to get my son off to his drum lesson in about 15 minutes time. So squeezing one in quickly before I head off for that. So let's get straight to it, shall we? I wanted to spend a little bit of time today talking about Edu and, and the Arsenal sort of backroom staff and just giving them a little bit of credit because I think they deserve it. Um, you know, I've always been a little bit sceptical of Edu. I certainly was at the start when the messages were a little bit mixed and he was working with Rouse and Yehi and it was, you know, clearly there was a very agent-led approach to transfers to how the club was operating in the transfer market. Since that's kind of been chucked to one's window, chucked to one side and out the window, you know, I think the transfer strategy has been great and he deserves an awful lot of credit for that, him and Mikel Arteta, because they've got together, they've worked together and they've set out a really you know, carefully laid out plan that they've followed and I think Arsenal benefited and the squad has benefited absolutely as a result. Um, there are still question marks over Edu, certainly when it comes to selling players and I think this summer that is going to be really, really crucial and how we all view him, I think, because the one thing we've all yet to really see, aside from a couple of deals, maybe... Um, since he's been, uh, Emmy Martinez, possibly, of uh, Joe Willock as well. But, you know, aside from those, Arsenal haven't really got any money for players. And they've had to get rid of players. And I, to be fair, I haven't sort of jumped on the bandwagon and really had a go at Edu for that. Because I kind of like the ruthless side of it all. Because they weren't going to get any money for those players. The longer they stayed at the club, they were just taking up wages. They were creating issues behind the scenes. They were unhappy players. And I kind of respected the ruthlessness of like, you know what? Sod it. Let's just get rid of them. Pay them. Get them out of the club. And then we can use that the wages that we save to rebuild the squad. And so I didn't mind that. Um, I know some people did and felt they should have been getting money for those players. But I think it would have been really, really difficult. And I think that certainly the squad, again, has benefited as a result of that pretty ruthless approach. But I think the contracts, Edu, Richard Garlick, head of football, um, direct, uh, I've, forgot, I've forgotten his full title now, head of football operations, <laughs> uh, Richard Garlick. Uh, Josh Cronky as well, um, Stan I suppose, because he's technically the owner even though Josh obviously runs things, Vinay and Mikel, I think they all deserve an awful lot of credit for what they've done in terms of contracts, you know Saliba's deal as I said in yesterday's video is absolutely fantastic news for the club, brilliant news for the club, I know some people have looked at it and said oh it's only four years, same as Saka, I don't really care about it, I mean obviously it'd be nice for it to be five years, six years but you know, they've still got him for another four years. And then if you need to, re and you will re need to renegotiate, I can understand from the player's point of view, that's what they want to do because they want to see how Arsenal progress over the next couple of years. I th even from an Arsenal point of view, I can think, you know, you don't lock them into a long-term contract and they've, they've still got something to, to prove and they're motivated to try and get a longer one. So I can see it from both point of views. I don't think it's necessarily that much of a bad thing and I'm not going to look at it now like some people have, which has really surprised me. It's almost like you want to find the negative in anything that, Oh, it's only four years. It's like, what, what What do you mean only four years? It's four more years of William Saliba and Bukayo Saka at Arsenal. Yes, you'll at some point, you know, in about two years' time, you'll have to start negotiations over a new deal. But but still, you've still got four years of these players. It's fantastic news. And these were really tricky contract deals to get over the line. You know, this summer, Arsenal have tied down, well, in, in the last year, sorry, tied down Gabriel, tied down Saka, tied down Martinelli, tied down Ramsdale, tied down Saliba. You know, I'm pretty sure Odegaard will follow fairly soon at quickly and Ben White on, on top of that as well. You know, this is the big core of the squad, really young players that every single top team in Europe would have been after. You know, make no mistake about it. Agents, clubs, everyone would have been banging on the doors saying, look, you know, what's going on? You've only got years left on this contract. This is what we're going to offer you. If you turn down this Arsenal contract, you come to us. Either, you know, we'll try and get you for cheap this summer or wait till next summer. This is what we're going to give you. You know, so many clubs would have been doing that over the last few months. And so Arsenal have had to deal with that. They've had to stay calm, sit down for talks one at a time with these players for really big contracts and get them over the line. And they've got them all over the line. And I think I think the whole team, you know, from starts with Mikel, obviously, because I don't think his players would sign if it's not for Mikel. But then it builds on to everyone behind that. Edu, Richard Garlick, you know, all the people I've mentioned, Vinay, of creating this club that players now want to stay at. You know, so many times we've seen Arsenal in the last 20 years or so, since the Invincibles, basically, start to build the nucleus of a really good team, and then, bang, clubs come in, vultures come in, circle, pluck them out one by one, and you're starting again from square one. You've lost all your best young talent, they've all gone. That's not happened now. You know, Arsenal have got this young, vibrant team, and they want to stay. 
And I think that is such a big thing for the project or whatever you want to call it. And for, just for the club, for the fans, it is such a huge thing that these players, some of the best young footballers in the world that every single club wants, wants to stay at Arsenal and wants to continue to build what is being built at Arsenal right now. And as a collective, as a club, everyone deserves a lot of credit for that because it just shows the work they're doing. It shows that the players believe in what they're doing. And I think it's fantastic. And um, yeah, I think I, I was I put it out on social media yesterday that I thought they deserve credit. Got a whole lot of abuse from a lot of people, PR, merchant and all that rubbish. It's absolutely not the case. If I think they're doing a bad job, I will say they're doing a bad job. But I don't know how anyone can look at the work that has been done in the last year on contracts and getting these players committed to the club can look at it and think, yeah, that's a bad thing. <laughs> There's nothing bad in it whatsoever. And, um, you know, as an Arsenal fan... But as an Arsenal reporter as well, I think they deserve a lot of credit for the work they've done. So let me know what you guys think. If you disagree with me, let me know. If you agree with me, let me know. I'll go through all the comments as I can. Uh, okay, so big week, I would say, coming up now. Obviously, Champions League final out the way. That's done and dusted last night. Manchester City treble um, winners. Congratulations, blah, blah, blah. 115 charges uh, hanging over them. But what a story. What a brilliant story. They managed to do it. Um Anyway, enough about that. No one wants to listen on this channel about Manchester City winning the treble. Um, but, you know, that's it now for football. It's done. We are now officially in the off-season. European competition's finished. Domestic competition's finished. We are now slap-bang in off-season. And the transfer window is really, really heating up. And I expect this is going to be a big, big week for Arsenal. I'll be very surprised if I, if I sit here next Sunday and things with Declan Rice have not moved on pretty dramatically. Um you know, this is a deal that Arsenal have been working on for a long time. That they want to get done, that they want to get done relatively quickly, if they can. And so I would say, you know, I'm, I'm pretty positive that we will see things progress in one way or the other in the space of the next sort of seven days or so, if not before that. So it's a really big week, I would say, for Arsenal. Um, you know, this is one that they want. And I think this is, you know, if you can get Declan Rice done quickly avoid getting dragged into a saga that runs on throughout the summer it would just be so beneficial for everyone you know having Declan Rice on board before pre-season begins would just be huge for him for everyone for the club you know he could go off to England if he's going to play for England I don't know if he'll drop out or not but if he could go off there he'd have his future secure Arsenal will know that he's coming and everyone can just relax Edu and the recruitment team can move on to other targets and you've got this one th through the door and you don't have to, like I said, get dragged into an Arsenal-like transfer saga that we've seen so many times before that tend to end badly <laughs> for Arsenal. Um, so, yeah, I'm expecting, I, I think we'll see a bit of movement um, in terms of the Declan Rice deal over the next uh, next few days or so as the week progresses. So, yeah, big one, I think, coming up for Arsenal. Uh, OK, I'll quickly move on to a few questions now. There's one from Anthony here who says, How certain are you that Balogun is leaving? Uh, well, I can't say for 100% that he's leaving, but I'm pretty certain that I'd be surprised, let's put it that way, I'd be surprised if he doesn't leave this summer. You know, maybe maybe he'll stay, maybe Arsenal will get a bid for Enketia, move Enketia on and decide to keep Balogun, even though he's at the moment not looking like he's going to sign a new contract. But I'd be surprised if that happens. I just think this will be the summer that Balogun goes, as I've talked about in previous videos, because of his contract situation, because of his desire to pretty much be guaranteed first team minutes now because of how difficult that might be at Arsenal going forward. Um, I think that they will, uh, and the interest in him, there's going to be widespread, in, well, there is widespread, widespread interest in him, that um, the, it's just the summer that's going. So when you ask me how certain I am, I would probably, if I was going to put a percentage on it, I'd probably say about 80%. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Like I said, anything can happen in this summer. Okay, so Hugo, I think Hugo C, apologies if I totally butchered the pronunciation on that, says Lokonga, Pepe or Tavares should be offered to West Ham instead of Balogun or Smith Rowe. However, Balogun should be sold out rightly, not as a make weight for Rice as he can fetch us up to 40 million. 40 million, that's an interesting figure. Could he could he reach that? We'll have to wait and see, but um, it'd be fantastic if Arsenal could get 40 million for Balogun. Uh, I think a lot depends on just how many clubs sort of go into the race for him. I can understand what you're saying about uh, Lukonga, Pepe or Tavares being offered to West Ham, but there's an issue with that in that, you know, West Ham only want to take players that they want to take. Would they want to take Tavares? Not sure. Would they want to take Pepe? Again, not sure. Not sure on Lukonga either. So, uh, you know, I think Smith Rowe for them is probably a more uh, exciting 
a sort of talent to be dangled in front of them as a potential swap deal. Like I said yesterday, I hope that doesn't happen. I don't want to see Smith Rowe involved in this deal. I'd much rather he stayed at Arsenal, be part of the squad next season. The ones that you've mentioned, I'm just not sure they're going to be too appealing, uh, appealing for them. You know, I just don't know. Pepe on his wages would West Ham take those on? Do they really need him? You know, Tavares is a good young, talented left back, very raw, still a lot to learn. Seen that he struggled at times in the Premier League before, kind of struggled a little bit after a very good start with Marseille last season. Is he going to be that appealing to part, part sort of to accepting less money for Declan Rice? I just don't, I don't know. So I can see what you're saying, Hugo, but I'm not sure. I think, um, I think they'd be much more interested in a swap deal for someone like Emil Smith Rowe or Kieran Tierney than they would be for the uh, for the players that you've mentioned. And Richard Flowers says, why are we not looking at James Ward Prowse as an option? Uh, well, I don't know. I can't tell you <laughs> uh, that. It's an interesting one. I've not really heard any Arsenal fan calling for James Ward-Prowse to be a uh, transfer target this summer. Obviously, he's going to be leaving Southampton. We know that after the relegation. He'll be wanting to stay in the Premier League. He's a very good player. He's been excellent for Southampton. Real servant for the club. Fantastic on set pieces, obviously, in and around the England squad. Um, but I'm not sure if James Ward-Prowse is the player that Arsenal would really be sort of considering at this point, even as a squad player. I think that uh, they much rather be targeting younger younger players and James Ward-Prowse. He doesn't really fit the age profile. He cost a fair bit of money. I imagine Southampton would want to get a decent chunk of money for their captain and their best player, even if they have been relegated. So it just doesn't really feel like an Arsenal one to me. That it feels more like, a, again, a, I don't know, a West Ham or... Um, Everton, someone like that going for James Ward-Prowse rather than Arsenal or Tottenham maybe, you know, some mid-table teams. <laughs> uh, but thank you very much for your question, Richard. Appreciate it as always. All right, that's it from me, everyone, today. Thank you very much for watching. A little bit shorter than normal, but like I said, I've got to head out now, take the boy to his, uh, to his drum lessons. So have a fantastic day. Thank you for all the questions and comments as always. Anything you've agreed with, disagreed with, please let me know in the comments below and I'll be back tomorrow to see and what has gone on in the last 24 hours in the world of Arsenal. Have a great day.